Welcome back to Every Other Carl. Today, I'm gonna to be mounting some bindings on a pair of skis. And at the same time, I'm also showing you how to make skiing a more affordable sport. So this is a classic trick. I bought an old pair of skis. These were literally $10 at a ski swap. The bindings are still in good shape. They're Tyrolia bindings. I have also from a ski swap, a pair of Fisher skis. These are kind of nice hard carving. Uh, I don't know if you'd call them race skis, but they're, they're close to it. They have a pretty good side cut. These skis are actually brand new from about, I don't know, eight years ago or so. And what I'm going to do is just transfer these bindings onto those skis. And I don't have to pay a pro to do this because it's a relatively simple thing if you're careful and you have a general idea of how to do this. Let's get to it. All right, here's the tools that you're going to need. A drill, a ruler, I have another one over here, um, a couple screwdrivers, a Phillips and a flat, a couple of drill bits, some masking tape, a pencil, I have an X-Acto knife, that's for one little detail, some super glue, and I'm using some spring clips just to hold the skis to the bench. First thing I want to do is get the brakes out of the way. These are these little arms on either side of the binding. For that, I'm just using a little bungee cord. Use a rubber band or a piece of string or something. Get them out of the way. And then the ski is gonna lay flat on the table. <clears throat> I'm gonna clip the ski to the bench just to make sure it's not gonna move around too much. Now, these are the old pair of skis. They're all dinged up, so I don't really care about protecting them, but when I clip down my new pair of skis, I'll put a towel under there just to protect the, the surface. Now I'm just gonna remove the screws. There's just four screws on each part of the binding, the front and the back. And you do need kind of an extension just to get down in there. Now, a little disclaimer here, bindings are what keep your feet attached to the ski. So it is really important to make sure that the bindings are in good shape. I did check these out because I know what I'm looking at. Um, if you really don't know what you're looking at, probably a good idea to have a pro do the bindings for you. Okay, I'm done with these skis. I'm gonna bring in my new pair of skis here. All right, so the first thing that we wanna do is put some markings on our ski so that we know where we're gonna actually place the binding. So every ski comes with, or uh, every ski comes with a little marking either on the side or the top that shows where the suggested mounting center mounting point of uh, the binding is gonna be. And so some people would suggest actually measuring this out yourself. There are people who have different preferences if the binding is going to be more forward on the ski or the back or dead center. Um, but that's the suggested center point of where your boot is going to rest. Your boot will also have a little marking that shows the center of the base of the boot. So the idea is to get that to line up as close to the center marking of the ski as possible. So to do this, to mark up our ski without actually damaging the top surface of the ski, we're actually going to cover it in masking tape. Just generally down what your eyeball sees as the center of the ski. And then we're going to get an exact measurement of the center of the ski. All right, so one problem you might run into when you're trying to identify the exact center line of your ski is how to measure edge to edge. Because most skis have kind of a rounded top sheet, it's hard to just look at the ruler and decide where the edge is. So one way to get around that is to use a square I happen to have a square here, and just put it up against the edge. If you don't have a square, just find something that's 90 degrees. You could use a piece of 
scrap wood or even a box or whatever it is. And then put your ruler up against the edge of your 90 degree angle or your square. I'll use the square. And then that is your starting point. Put it on the other side, and that's your ending point. So from this, I can tell that my skis at the center, at the middle point, are exactly seven centimeters across. So that means the middle point will be three and a half centimeters. I'll mark it, and I'll make a couple more marks up a little bit higher and down a little bit lower, and then I'll draw a straight line right through it. I'm also going to mark that suggested center point of the ski just so I can see it better. Now we have to find the center line of the bindings. So I'm going to follow a similar process and cover this with some masking tape. I'm going to go ahead and Measure side to side. This one's a little bit easier to see. Find the center. Now, what you want to do is bring that center line up and over the front of the binding so you can see it. And the back. All right, so we have the center line of the binding and we have the center line of the ski. Now we're going to mark where the toe part of our binding is gonna sit. So you take your binding and you take your boot, put your boot into the toe part of the binding and then line up that center mark with the center mark that you put on your skis. Okay, so here you can see the middle of the ski is matching up with the middle of the boot. Now that we have the center mark lined up with the boot, we know where the, the toe part of the binding is gonna sit. Now all you have to do is make sure that the toe part of the binding is exactly centered on the skis. To do that, we use the marks that we made on the front and back of the masking tape. That matches. We just tape it down. And that is in position. All right, now that it's in position, I'm just going to take a drill bit that fits pretty snugly in the screw holes, put it down in, and tap it a few times. Just turn the drill bit while I'm tapping it, just to make sure it stays centered. Get a nice centered indent in the ski. Okay, so the goal here is to leave an indent in the top sheet of the ski that we're gonna see when we take the binding and all the tape off. That's gonna be our uh, mark where we're gonna drill our holes.
All right, so I'm going to take up half the tape, leave the back here for when we mount the back part of the binding. So I have my four indents. One, two, and then three, four. Probably can't pick them up on camera, but I know where to drill. So now I just have to measure out how deep I'm going to go into the ski and then drill the holes. Okay, I got my bit. This one happens to be 11 64ths. I think a lot of ski bindings have that size screw, but definitely check your screw when you're measuring out your bit. And to check the depth, I'm just gonna put one of the screws back into the binding, push it all the way through. I'm gonna come all the way out the other side. And that is going to be the depth that I have to drill to. So I'll take my drill bit, put it up against there. And then mark that off with some tape on the bit. Okay, so I measured the bit and I put the tape at the exact depth that I want to drill to. This is really important so that you don't accidentally drill through the ski. Now at this point, I'm going to clip, clamp my skis down to the table. And start drilling. I recommend doing this kind of slowly with a little bit of pressure because once you get in there, it can drill pretty quickly. It's just a lot of plastic. <laughs> All right, here's where the X-Acto knife comes in, a little razor blade. When you drill, you get these little raised edges around each hole. And uh, you don't want to kind of cut those down a little, camper the hole a little bit. Not completely necessary, but uh, if you do this, it helps the binding sit really flush up against the ski. All right, now that we got our four holes, what we wanna do is just put the screws in enough so they poke out slightly on the bottom of the binding so that when you place the binding down, it's easy to find and align it with the holes. Boom, right there. And to keep the screws from backing out, I'm going to put a little dab of super glue in each hole. That's not entirely necessary, but it's a nice little added precaution. Screw them in slowly at a low torque setting on the drill, and then I'll finish them by hand. The last thing I want to do is strip the holes.
All right, that's in there. I didn't go crazy with torquing it down. Uh, I did just enough so that it's really snug and it's flush with the ski. But again, I don't want to strip the screws out of that uh, ski because it's it's uh, it's not impossible to refill those holes and redrill them, but it's not preferable. All right, so now that I have the front binding on, I'm going to start working on the back binding. First thing I want to do is make sure that the binding itself is centered in its adjustments because the binding can move back and forth uh, in the, the body of the binding itself. So do that, prop up this little tab back, push it all the way up. And these bindings, um, the tab actually stays up. Some bindings, it's just spring loaded. You have to keep the screwdriver in there. But here, I'm gonna push it all the way back Actually, I'll push it all the way forward and then I'll push it about halfway back and release it and let it pop in. All right, so that is about centered. So what that allows for is it allows uh, me to buy a bigger pair of boots or somebody else to ski on these skis who has different sized feet and they could be either slightly smaller or slightly larger and still use the skis. Okay, now that I have that nicely aligned, I'm gonna find the center line of this binding, similar to the way that I did the front binding. You might have seen me use this guy. Uh, if you have one of these, it's a lot easier because you can see through it and it also gives you a center point. You can find that center point much quicker. All right, now that I have that all measured up, I'm gonna take my boot, put the toe of the boot into the toe of the binding, push it forward. And then put the back binding up to where it's going to fit nice and snug. Remember, the back of the binding is still going to be adjustable. So that's going to give me an idea where I want to put it. Now I can take my boot away. Mark it on my center line. Tape it down. You might have noticed I didn't have enough tape here. I had to extend the line because I couldn't see it in the back. So I'll put some more tape down. going to go with the same method as before, put the drill bit down in there and make some indents in the top sheet of the ski. That's pretty much going to do it for our bindings. Let's just take the bungee off the brake. And there we go. Let's try it with the boots.
And there you go, these skis are ready to ski. And just notice these skis cost 30 bucks at a swap just because they're old, even though they were never used. That's still a great ski. It's got a great side cut in it. So it's a pretty modern ski. And uh, the bindings came off of this $10 pair of skis, which um, are really way too old for my liking, but that binding technology hasn't changed much. And just like that, for 40 bucks, I have basically a new pair of skis. All right, hope you enjoyed that little tutorial. Like, comment, and subscribe if you would, please. I'll see you in the next one.